work is quite extraordinary. I mean, all of us look at it and think, gosh, what's different about this? And I suppose the difference about it is that Ender is actually able to capture more than we can see ourselves. And that's, that's the confusing thing about it, is when we look at the scene, we can't actually see what Ender is showing us. And that's, that's why we have this huge emotional link with these, with these pictures as well. Um, all of us love the sea. All of us have such very special feelings of the sea. And Ender somehow is, is able to capture just, just intrinsic emotion. And I suppose, I suppose the grow that we have for these, for, the, for, these, for, these, for these places. And some of them are kind of, I mean, they're, they're, they're what's called anthropogenic. I mean, they're really nothing more than the, the kind of showing of, of man's man's imprint on the landscape and sometimes it's a nice imprint and sometimes it's not such a nice imprint but what's beautiful about these images is, is no matter what imprint it is we all just have such such a connection with this and I'd like to, to, to really just finish on that and thank Ender for showing us the, the connection between what we see and what can be shown because that's, that's a, rare, a rare talent. Thank you. great services that, that Enda has given us, has given us an opportunity to reflect on the real beauty of the bay, both in terms of the faded glory of obviously what we had with these wonderful old structures and baths and docks, nearly none of which have their original function anymore, most of which are regarded as being sort of museum-like remnants, a little window onto the way people behaved in, a, in an earlier age. Some people would see them as a kind of a, a Hogarthian sign of decaying civilization. Uh, some of them look at them and say, you know, we need to do better with this. Perhaps this is where we should build a rebuilt marina or a rebuilt swimming bath or maybe encourage people to come down and, and use the amenity. But I think the real wonder of what Enda has done for us is to actually capture them the way they are and to give us an insight into not what they could be, not what they were, but how all of those factors have combined to give them a real beauty that I think. So just a few words about, about what I do and sort of about the pictures in general. And I suppose my background is landscape photography and architecture. Um, I've been taking landscape photos since I was a kid and then I went on and studied architectural technology. So I think when I was about 13 or 14 I started taking pho photographs and it was a natural that it would be landscape photographs because I'm from rural Sligo. And it just felt so natural, it just it clicked with me straight away and I suppose everything I love is to do with the senses, whether it be cinema, music, um, sort of photography, food, architecture, design. I love all these different, different things and, and photography definitely fits into that, that, that niche or whatever. And, but it was after living five years in Berlin, a city where I was really fascinated by all these old structures and buildings that basically celebrated their past, celebrated the decay that was there, like you'd have bullet holes in old buildings and like sort of the, the famous uh, museum over there and there's literally a big lump taken out of the column where a shell hit it. And they didn't try and patch it up, they didn't try and repair it, that's, that's what it is. Or you'd have like these old clubs called the Bunker, which is basically like an old bunker. Or sort of uh, Aver, which is basically an old power station. Or Oaks and Gamusa, which is an old fruit and veg shop, and now it's a bar. And I just found that so fascinating. And when I came back from, from, from Berlin, and I suppose that in influenced me influenced the type of photography that I took and influenced the landscapes and I realised that sort of all this haphazard chaotic nature of the Irish is reflected in the landscape. So you've got all these mad structures whether it be like a steering wheel sticking out of a lake and I didn't try and hide that because that's us and that's the Irish landscape. So it was after I suppose uh, moving out to Dunleary that I started um, taking urban landscapes and actually initially it was in, around Kubeg. I, I started taking uh, photographs of the power station and of Rings End and different elements of the pier and the lighthouse and stuff like that. But it was, it was, it was later that, that I started taking photographs of these old um, structures that you see here. And I was, just, I was fascinated by them and I suppose for me it was a bit of Berlin in County Dublin that you, know, you had these old interesting structures that probably in their heyday were pretty nondescript, like they're not architecturally amazing but what they did have was like tons of character and personality and you know you had all the sort of aged concrete and everything was uh, sort of discolored, you had the, the concrete becoming the same colour as the rocks in which they sat and I thought this was fascinating and, and I suppose that's what duality is about. 
like Senator Crown said, some people will look at them and go, oh, God, it's terrible the way that the, the, the state they're in now. But, but others will actually look beyond that and see their importance and the, the memories and everything that was tied into them. And that's what duality is. It's like, you know, the Irish are great at, you know, the glass is half empty, but the glass can also be half full. And I suppose the, the best example is the, 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 the radiating beams, where you have the exact same photograph taken, the same viewpoint, same, same lens, same, same camera, one on sunset and one the following sunrise. But there are two completely interpretations. And I suppose the, the bath represents the soul and sort of how you know, your, your, your viewpoint in life can become distorted because of other events. And you know, that the beauty is there. You just have to open your eyes. So I also then at some stage realized that you know, the, the, the relationship that people have with these baths, it's almost like the relationship they have with a loved one or sort of the loss of a loved one. And like I remember, um, some guy who saw the, the, you know, the, the photograph in the bath where you've got the graffiti and you see the two swimming pools. And he was frozen in his tracks and you could see that he was brought back to his childhood. Other people saw it and it was like, oh, it's terrible the way they look. But he was brought back to his childhood and it was like, it was like the memory of a loved one. And I realized how important that these structures were to people's lives in the area. So, you know, I didn't want to make it like some depressing sort of documentary on, 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 on the state of, of, of the bath. I wanted it to be a celebration because I suppose they've evolved, just like we evolved. Like sort of, you know, once they were used, some of them now are still in use, some of them are sort of in disrepair, some of them have been demolished, and, but that's life. And like sort of life just goes on. And so that's basically what it's about. Um, what you see here is basically a culmination of about three years' work. So I'm pretty happy with them, I hope some of you are as well. And so that's it. So the only other thing to say is that they're all for sale, in two sizes, <laughs> and my book. And once again, thanks so much for coming, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. So.